Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me well. Welcome to this webinar hosted by EuroCities and Julie's Bicycle. Uh, we are hosting today through the ROC EU funded project. So for your information, this uh, webinar is being recorded. Uh, the video recording will be made available in the next couple of days, so you will be able to view it again and share it on the ROC uh, YouTube channel. Uh, before we start with today's topic, uh, some housekeeping information uh, in this GoToWebinar uh, software. You can find several icons on your GoToWebinar panel. So the first one I want to show you is raising hands. So if you could just click on your little hand uh, icon just to make sure you can hear me fine. I see it works. Nice. Uh, there is also a chat box uh, where you can you can use this to flag the technical issues you're having during the webinar and we will try to answer you in the meantime. Uh, there is another box asking questions. Uh, you can use this to type your questions for the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Uh, and if accidentally you click the X, uh, in the dialog box, you will be taken out of the webinar, but you can rejoin by just following the link you received in the confirmation email. So everything seems to work fine. Our speakers are with us as well. Um, so uh, now just a bit about us and why we are here together this afternoon. As I said, this webinar is presented by EuroCities together with Julie's Bicycle. So EuroCities, it's the network of major European cities. We were founded in 1986 and we are based today in Brussels. We represent uh, more than 150 cities all over Europe. And our main objective is to reinforce the role that local governments should play in a multi-governance structure. We focus on all things urban, so it's quite broad. And Julie's Bicycle is a charity based in London that supports the creative community to act on climate change and environmental sustainability. And they are our host today as well. Uh, and together, Eurocities and Julie's Bicycle with 30 other organizations, we are partners in the ROC project, which is financed by the Horizon 2020 Research Programme of the European Union. We put together this programme of webinars to inform the general public uh, meaning you, about the ROC project and the many different topics we are working on. And today's webinar is the second episode of the second season uh, and more will be uh, produced after. Just to start some information about ROC before we dig into the real topic of today. So ROC, as I said, uh, is a European funded project. It stands for Regeneration and Optimization of Cultural Heritage in Creative and Knowledge Cities. And in this project, we are considering cultural heritage in its very wide definition uh, as a tool for urban regeneration. Uh, and the cities we are working with, uh, the 10 cities we are working with, are testing a circular model of transformation of historic city centers. Uh, and the cities who will present today, Lisbon, Turin and Cluj, are all partners in the ROC project. ROC aims to demonstrate how cultural historical city centers can become laboratories to test new models of urban regeneration and therefore leading the urban transition. As I said, we have developed a new approach which combines technical, organizational and social innovations to move from a linear to a more circular urban regeneration model. Uh, collaborative regeneration initiatives are part of this approach and today we will discuss participatory approaches and social inclusion in cultural heritage. So first, uh, I wanted to give you some introductory information regarding participation and citizen engagement before uh, we uh, go deep, deeper with the cities examples. So participation and citizen engagement, this is not new. But at the same time, something important has changed in recent years. There has been an increasing demand by civil society and citizens to have a greater say in public decision making and also a desire among many governments to be more inclusive and responsive to citizens' needs. So why do cities promote participation and citizen engagement? Well, first, because cities depend on citizens. Citizens must be valued for their crucial part in the urban ecosystem. And there's a lot of other reasons why it's important. 
because participation of citizens in urban development can reduce the gap between municipalities and the general public, promote transparency and accountability, provide information to local authorities and ideas on the public issues that citizens are facing. Citizens can also support municipalities in their planning decisions. Uh, and together they can build more long-term and sustainable solutions that respond to the local needs and the local values and local interests. So cities are striving to build solutions with the evolving needs and nature of citizens at the heart. However, there is still a lot of myths and misconceptions regarding citizens' participation. Some say it can be expensive to organize, that it always involves the same people, it forces the government to implement the ideas that have gathered through citizens' participation. It only collects complaints, etc., etc. But cities today will show you that this is not true. Then, culture in general and cultural heritage have proved to be great tools to engage citizens. But why and how? Because culture and cultural heritage uh, form vital part of the human experience in everyday life. They can bring communities together, empower, educate and inspire. Uh, culture can provide a space to reflect, uh, contemplate and critique today's society. It can also drive positive change in citizenship and also something important, it's fun. So now today we have some context of the topic. Now we can dig into concrete examples of citizens' engagement and participation that have been tested and implemented in our invited cities. Our first example takes us to Lisbon, uh, the neighborhood of Marvilla, precisely in Lisbon. So as part of the ROC project, Lisbon set up an interpretive center in the library of Marvilla, where the local community participates actively by gathering knowledge about the cultural heritage of the neighborhood and making it available to the public. Uh, to understand this case study, it's also important to understand the local context of the neighborhood. And our speakers, Roberto and Alexandra from Lisbon, will tell you more about it. So Roberto is a postdoc researcher at the Institute of Social, Social Sciences of the University of Lisbon and Alexandra works as Rock Living Lab and Interpretive Center Manager in the Lisbon City Council and I will now make them presenter so they can tell you more about uh, the case study we are discussing. Uh, Roberto and Alexandra, floor is yours. Can you hear us and can you speak as well? Uh -huh. Does this work? So I think there is an issue with their microphone. So maybe we can go on with the another. Ah, yes. Roberto, can you hear us? Hello. Can you I hear, hear Yes, we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me, but I cannot hear you. This is a problem. I don't know how to solve the problem. Okay, fine. I can open my my PowerPoint with Alexandra. We are here from Lisbon. We wanted to hear you, so we are trying to solve um, understand what's the problem. <clears throat> Yes, I can I can present, yeah, and then see if 
we managed to to solve. Uh, well, I'm um, uh, Alexandra. We we will present anyway, and then we will try to see how to solve the problem. Okay, so. Um, Okay, uh, so uh, it's uh, Roberto and uh, it's Roberto and uh, Alexandra from Lisbon. Alexandra is from the municipality of Lisbon, and I am from uh, the uh, University of Lisbon. Uh, and uh, we are both uh, partners in the Rock project. We are the local partners in Lisbon. Well, we would like to present today in this webinar the experience. Um, Okay, uh, Cecile, I'm reading your your messages. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, so we wanted to present a little bit of the interpretive center of uh, Marville and Beato. Marville and Beato, as Cecile told you, is the area of intervention of the Rock project. Uh, I know that Cecile already. Um, Told you, okay. Told you a little bit of uh, this area, just so I will be very brief about that. Um, just to say that this area is um, is a very diverse one in uh, different um, under different aspects, uh, from the geographical uh, to the socioeconomic uh, aspect. Uh, there are different kinds of uh, internal divisions within the area and also between the area and the rest of the city um, and these are uh, these are differences that still resonate today in terms of traditions that are being defended by the uh, local communities and this is uh, um, uh, this is related this is connected to uh, our analysis of uh, the cultural heritage in this area because in the rock project we understand culture it is just both uh, as both uh, tangible and an intangible uh, cultural heritage so we take into account this diversity as a, a, a characteristic of um, of the this area in terms of cultural heritage uh, this is a picture of uh, the area uh, for those of you who do not know uh, the area this is a way that we tried at the university to um, uh, provide a, an easier uh, way to uh, understand and to uh, locate oneself within the area. Um, and uh, on your left, you have the city center of the city, the historical center, and on your right, you have uh, the um, well-known area uh, of the 98 Expo. Uh, one of the most recent uh, uh, area, urbanized areas of, of Lisbon. So basically, Marville and Beato finds, um, uh, and, sorry, the, the, area, the area of Marville and Beato are stuck in between the historical center and this very new area. And during uh, the last decades, Marville and Beato have received uh, much less attention by the public and private investments in the area. That's also the reason why the Rock Project wanted to um, tackle some of the issues, some of the challenges of these areas, also in terms of uh, regeneration of, uh, of uh, the area. Uh, so uh, what we have done uh, through the Rock Project in the last uh, in the last two years has been to promote. Uh, uh, the municipality has promoted uh, initiatives of urban regeneration in order to um, uh, in order to upgrade uh, the area and uh, mainly we focused in the northern part of this area which is uh, uh, an area with a new uh, infrastructure that was uh, built uh, by the municipality of lisbon uh, uh, two years ago which is a library uh, the library uh, is not just a library it's a uh, a, a cultural center is uh, an incubator of uh, uh, numerous initiatives in the area. Uh, so we decided uh, as partners of the Rock Project to 
make the library the headquarter of our initiatives and also of our investigation. Um, so we uh, recently produced uh, um, and conducted a survey in this area. Uh, we uh, surveyed around uh, 400 uh, tenants in this uh, in this uh, part of the city, and uh, we asked uh, um, actually a lot of questions about uh, cultural heritage and also how people participate uh, for the regeneration of this area. Um, but I won't go into detail on that because uh, just to let you know that the university is uh, carrying on uh, a deep and in-depth analysis of uh, these aspects. Uh, and then I would like just to introduce one of the uh, most important initiatives that has been uh, promoted by the municipality uh, through the RAF project, which, which is the interpretive center that we will uh, call uh, year after Centro in Portuguese, so the Centro Interpretativo di Marville Beato. And uh, now I give the stage to Alexandra, who is uh, coordinating uh, the Centro and uh, to explain the reason why and how the Centro works. Hello, everybody. Um, why, why did we um, did we want to create uh, this center in uh, uh, Marvilla and Beato, in the, the library of Marvilla, uh, to strengthen people's sense of identity with the territory? As Roberto said, the territory has uh, lots of internal and external barriers. And uh, um, there are several communities in the in the, um, in the territory. So one of the the main issues was to strengthen the sense of identity with the territory, to bring people closer to local history and local cultural heritage, to aggregate the dispersed knowledge among the various entities and institutions operating in this territory. There are several institutions that operate there that have a, a, a social intervention, but um, the, the, the knowledge they gathered is not um, is not um, um, is not sure. shared with each other, and uh, to uh, leverage the Vidas e Memorias de Bairro project. That is a project of the Lisbon Libraries Network that is being developed in Marvilla's library for three years and which consists of weekly community workshops with residents around memory. This project was the, 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 the main, um, main starting point of the center, our interpretive center. And uh, to reinforce the library's role of cultural and community hub. How did we uh, are how are we doing this? Um, the first step was to create an organizing committee, an organizing committee that represents the, the population of Marville and Beato. So it, uh, its members are the local residents individually, people that were in the Vidas and Memorias project, and other people that are. Um, um, important figures in the, in the community in the, the, the sense that they care for their uh, territory and they want to preserve the cultural heritage there. Second, the representatives of local institutions, those institutions that intervene in the area and that gather the knowledge, but uh, that we don't have um, a way of sharing. The Lisbon municipality, um, its uh, workers, mainly historians and sociologists, and uh, the, uh, the um, investigators of Institute of Social Sciences uh, of the University of, of Lisbon. Uh, one of, of them is Roberto. The committee meets twice a month. So at a regular basis, it's a, a, a committee that really works. The, 
the approach to the design of the center. Um, I would like to frame the creation of this interpretive center because the choices made were not at random. On the contrary, they were made taking into account three central ideas that I will call the central axis that have guided the design of the center. The first, citizen participation. The second, the dialogical approach to memory. And the third, third social museology. So these are the three main ideas that were in the basis of the implementation of this interpretive center. Uh, Cecile, can you please just say something because we are trying to solve the problem of the audio. Can you? Can you hear me still? Okay, no. now we can hear you. Okay, oh, okay. perfect. Okay, Fine. good. <laughs> I'll let you continue now. Yeah, so okay, uh, now going to the... Sorry. Um, there's minutes. Sorry, we, we have now a new kind of software. So, uh, yeah, the approach is based on three, um, three main axes. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say something about citizen participation, mm -hmm. as a, I am a, uh, working on citizen participation mm -hmm. as a researcher at the university. Just to say, I won't go into detail again, we don't have uh, enough time, but um, the Rock Project and our actions in Lisbon are uh, driven by the principles of uh, citizen participation which have been uh, recently uh, uh, issued by um, several international and transnational uh, agencies and documents. This is one of the most known in Europe, uh, the Urban Agenda for the EU 2016, the Pact of uh, Amsterdam. And you can see that the principle of citizen participation is uh, uh, has been uh, uh, massively incorporated in the in the um, uh, guidelines and prescriptions that uh, the European Commission is giving to the cities. Um, then uh, translating this principle into it is principles into concrete uh, actions in the cities. We can see that uh, in urban regeneration, uh, the uh, engagement, the participation of uh, local communities is uh, generally aimed to reinforce the uh, social capital, which is uh, basically the community linkages between uh, people, but also uh, be, uh, sorry, be, yeah, between the people living in the area, but also um, between the, the area and the rest of the city. Then you can see that different scholars have uh, pointed out um, uh, several aspects that uh, participation can actually help to improve uh, like the civic, political, economic, and social aspects. Uh, but also, and this is something that uh, we want to highlight, given the characteristics of uh, Marvilla and Beato, is all, um, participation in urban regeneration is also about mobilizing uh, the efforts towards goals of social inclusion and also social justice. Um, but the rock is doing in Marvilla and Beato is not uh, is not um, to be understood as an action per se without any other connections with uh, local policies. What I'm showing now is a map that has been uh, produced by um, the municipality of Lisbon uh, in 2010-2011, uh, which identifies some of the critical areas of uh, the cities where the local council uh, decided to invest um, uh, some additional funding uh, to the uh, more standard local policies and uh, to invite local partnerships uh, composed of uh, um, NGOs uh, and uh, local communities uh, to um, uh, promote and to implement actions of uh, urban regeneration. This, uh, I want to now zoom in uh, on this and uh, tell you that in the uh, rock area, the intervention area, we have actually some of these uh, identified uh, critical uh, neighborhood, critical areas. Actually, they are named priority areas uh, of, the, of the local council. Here you have also the names of uh, these uh, areas. This is uh, to say that, that the rock project is uh, acting upon a territory where the local council 
is aware that there are uh, challenges, ongoing challenges, and actually some of these challenges have been uh, tackled through uh, other local policies. And the ROC project is uh, uh, giving more impetus to these actions to be um, successful in this area. Uh, then I, we pass now to the second axis, mm -hmm. which is the dialogical approach to memory. Uh, this, this project is all around memory, and memory is our second X in the, the design of the center. Memory of the people that live or lived here, memory of the places, memory of the local institutions. So we had to take into account memory studies. And uh, since remembering is an individual act, for a long time, even in social studies, the social basis of memory has been neglected. Uh, all box, this one, is the f was the first um, to, to present a conceptualiza conceptualization of memory as a collective phenomenon. He says that there is no such thing as individual memory. What we remember as individuals is always conditioned by the fact that we belong to a group. And collective memory is the anchor of the group identity, ensuring its continuity in space and time. This is true, of course, but um, it is also um, a theory of social determinism, because this, uh, this scholar has neglected the dialogical and conflictual nature of both identity and memory. For another stream of studies, the memory policies approach, memory as, as, is a construct of the present. The images of the past are strategically, strategically invented and manipulated by key sectors of society to serve their present needs. From this perspective, traditions are deliberately invented and spread by the political sphere by imposing an official memory. So in this approach, uh, the power is, 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 is important because uh, the present um, defines what is, uh, is uh, the, the official memory. For the popular approach, uh, for the popular memory approach, social memory is a space of station between different voices, each trying to impose its version of the past. Foucault is one of these thinkers who considers that alternative memories exist under the hegemony of dominant discourses, and that it is cru crucial to give a voice to those who have been silenced and marginalized in the dominant discourses. We view memory as the result of a dialogical process. So we have gathered some of the contributions of these scholars, but we, we, we think that uh, memory is the result of the intersection of personal and social histories, conceiving the individual as an autonomous interpretive agent. The act of individual interpretation is nevertheless related to the cultural universe in which the individual is, in, is inserted. The construction of the past, although always on specific cultural context, is nevertheless shaped by the emotional experience and personal expectations of each individual. So we are, we are going to um, interview um, the individuals. They, they they tell us our their stories, but their stories have always a social context that is very important to be known um, to interpret those stories. For our interpretive center, we hold this double assumption. Any act of representation of the past has always power relations in it. And the selectivity of memory is ine inevitable. We interpret the world and, and the past on the basis of our own experience. The, uh, we arrive to the third X uh, that is in the basis of the design of the interpretive center. Um, and I, I will uh, pass through it uh, more quickly. Um, From um, the traditional museology, uh, we have passed to uh, the new museology, and in the 90s, um, 
has surgi, has emerged a new um, form of museology that is called social museology. Social museology is a small scale museology, but of social, cultural, and economic impact, which focuses in its action on the development of the person through the identification, study, and the dynamization of the cultural heritage elements of a particular community through the use of participatory means. It is in the context of sociology that emerges the notion of participatory inventory, that is the, methodo the methodology we are using in, the, in our center, that we can define as the intervention of people and communities in the, in the identification and documentation of their cultural resources which implies their recognition as elements of local and personal identity, that is, as cultural heritage. And uh, those are some assumptions and characteristics of a participatory inventory. It is an open-ended inventory. It's unfinished, constantly evolving, because it is related to a flexible and evolving community. Experts and communities are at the same level to decide the methods, principles, and objectives of each phase of the inventory process. It's not easy, but we are trying to, 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 to achieve this goal. There is an equality between established powers. The recognition of the existence of a plurality of valid knowledge other than scientific knowledge, that is called the ecology of knowledge, and the new knowledge produced throughout the process will be the result of co-production and co-authorship. Uh, the methodology. We have uh, divided the territory of Marville and Beato into areas, um, into five areas, and uh, um, we have uh, divided the members of the, the organizing committee into five groups. Each one to um, each one linked to each area. Um, we have mapped the, the cultural heritage elements of each group. Each group was um, responsible for mapping the cultural heritage elements of each of his its area. Um, and uh, for each area, each group had to uh, gather documents, photos, videos, and in identification of life stories. And uh, with information given by the, the organizing committee groups, the IC team, the, the interpretive center team, um, has created a database with the documents, the photos, and the, 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 the names of the people, the contacts of the people that we uh, interview. The, those are the exploratory interviews, some of them. And uh, after the, these uh, exploratory interviews, we are going to do some final interviews conducted with the technical support of our video library. And uh, it, will, it will be, um, we are going to edit small videos that are going to be inside these uh, multimedia equipment. This one is um, the left. We have a big device with an illustrated timeline and a sliding screen that provides information specific to the location it is on. And the second is a digital table based on a big touch screen that provides interactive information based on maps coming from different times. Uh, all, the doc all the information gathered by the group will be inside this multimedia equipment that are, is going to be in the, the, the entrance of Marvilla's library. The interpretive center will be launched in the library, becoming one of its public services. It will organize in articulation with the, its partners and stakeholders, exhibitions and debates on issues related to the territory, its memory and the ongoing urban transformations. It will be a place where people can access specific information about Marville and Beato territory and, and its history, and it will continue to carry on its participatory inventory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a great presentation. Despite the technical issues at the beginning, we really managed. 
Um, I just wanted to add something for participants to know that last week we organized a replication workshop in Lisbon where the 12 cities participated and, and came to Lisbon to hear more about the Marvilla and what is happening there thanks to the ROC project. Uh, I don't know if Roberto or Alexandra you want to tell a word about the workshop or what you gain from it or yeah, um, about about the, the event that we had last week. Yeah, I mean, yeah last week we organized, um, uh, well, the municipality and the university together with uh, some of the partners of uh, the ROC project, namely the EuroCities and uh, Confindustria in Italy. Uh, we organized a, a three-day event. Uh, the, um, uh, the first one was the Roadshow, uh, the Roadshow uh, in partnership with the Confindustria was uh, an open event uh, to uh, uh, city partners of uh, the Rock project, but not only. Actually, we received also cities from uh, mm -hmm. um, countries, well, I mean, cities that do not uh, make part of, of the Rock project. And the idea was to show uh, what we have been doing in Lisbon in terms of uh, innovation in uh, cultural heritage. So the way we are innovating the ways uh, cultural heritage can actually become a uh, actually become a drive for uh, urban regeneration in the area. Um, and uh, after the roadshow, uh, the next two days, uh, Eurocities organized uh, um, the um, um, replicators uh, um, workshops and and uh, visit. Um, with uh, cities, uh, also in this uh, case, uh, cities uh, from uh, the Rock project, but also cities from other, um, from that are not members of uh, the Rock, and uh, we decided. Well, in the first days, uh, they were the the participants were um, invited to know uh, better the territory, and uh, the municipality organized uh, a tour in the neighborhood uh, showing uh, its uh, characteristics, its uh, peculiarities. And uh, in the last day, we had uh, a workshop. Uh, and uh, in this workshop, actually, we as a university had uh, a role in uh, um, showing some of the challenges uh, that we are facing uh, in Lisbon through the rock project, but not only. And uh, we focused on the uh, problems of uh, connection and uh, disconnection, uh, mobility, uh, basically, yeah, focused on uh, the mobility within the area and also between the area and the rest of the city, and how this has impacts over the actual uh, chance for the local communities to voice into uh, decision making and also uh, regeneration initiatives. Uh, yes. And uh, the idea was that participants in the co-creation workshop gave some solutions to this, uh, yeah. to the challenges you are still facing in, in Marvilla. And uh, we had some uh, interesting ideas, <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll go on with the, the next presentation. Uh, thank you very much for thank this. You. We, uh, if you can stay uh, in the webinar still, because uh, we will take questions also at the end. Uh, yeah, but okay. the participants, you can already type the questions now in the question box of your GoToWebinar panel, uh, so we can uh, keep them uh, at eye level and uh, keep them close for the last part of the of the webinar. So our next uh, example is the Casa del Cartiere in Turin, um, and I will make Julia Serrato in a moment the presenter for this case. So this, uh, as you know, Turin was uh, deeply affected by the industrial crisis in the 80s, which left millions of square meters of abandoned industrial areas. But heavy investment in culture and knowledge uh, has been made, and Turin is, Turin is now a good example of how culture can change the profile of a city. So the Casa del Carte uh, are public spaces in the Turin neighborhoods, refurbished through collaborations between public institutions, private foundations, associations, and the citizens. Uh, from what I know, there is today an existing network of eight Casa del Cartiere all over Turin, but uh, Julia, uh, who is also the communication officer of the network, will tell you more about the history of the network, what it does today, and how citizens are involved. 
And I also want to say that Julia has to leave after her presentation. So if you have specific questions for her, you can type them already in the in the questions and uh, we will send them uh, to her by email and she can maybe respond directly like this. So Julia, I will make you now a presenter so we will be able to see your screen and hopefully uh, you will be able to speak as well about the Casa del Cartiere. Parfait. Your, yeah, floor is yours. I'm uh, Giulia Cerrato and uh, okay. Um, sorry. Well, uh, yes, I work for the Rete delle Case del Quartiere, that is uh, uh, a network of uh, eight social cultural centers that are uh, spread in the city of, uh, of Turin in eight different neighborhoods. Uh, Mm, we are a sociocultural center, but uh, a particularly sociocultural center. We try to, um, we, well, the Casa del Quartiere are public spaces uh, for all, for all citizens. We are a social and cultural lab in which everyone can express collective ideas and projects in order to answer to needs of the, the people that live inside uh, each neighborhood and uh, we are spaces in which uh, people can do activities uh, and self-organize events and um, in order to participate to the, uh, the 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 social life of the of the city um, well the our second level association is a network composed by the the eight organization that uh, manage these eight public buildings um, each casa del quartiere um, born for different uh, um, reason uh, in different way but uh, we we have um, and also have uh, we, we have different uh, features, different uh, uh, features in common. And in 2050, we uh, write down, wrote down a manifesto that uh, in 10 points, we uh, try to, um, to explain what is uh, this model of uh, sociocultural center, Casa del Quartiere. So we are uh, places open to all citizens. Uh, we are spaces for active participation. Uh, accessible and welcoming places for meetings. Uh, we are space of all of all association and informal group and, and informal group, but we uh, but exclusive seat of none. So um, we are we aren't uh, an house of association, but uh, um, and the, all the association and organization foundation that organize activity inside our buildings cannot put the legal seat inside um, that. And uh, also we are box uh, like a container, the boxes of multiple projects uh, because we were, we have uh, services, free services and activities uh, and projects uh, with, about different topic. Uh, so culture, uh, welfare, uh, audience development and urban regeneration. We have different uh, uh, projects about common and urban regeneration of public spaces and uh, well and uh, social services. And in each Casa del Quartiere, you can find uh, um, a social cultural operators that work uh, and uh, we call them uh, social artisans. For us, uh, the social artisans' uh, main aim is uh, to help people to um, to help people to transform their ideas in uh, um, in a real project. And also, uh, Casa del Quartiere are uh, places between public and uh, private sectors because uh, uh, we, um, we the Casa del Quartiere are, the building is uh, public, but uh, the, the, the management is uh, from, uh, made, is made by uh, non-profit organizations, so private sectors. And we are 
in search of the right balance between economic uh, autonomy and public support. And we are place rooted in, uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, each structure, each organization uh, also um, has a different governance. Uh, about uh, the story of the Casa del Quartiere, um, the Casa del Quartiere born uh, 12, the first Casa del Quartiere born 12 years ago, but uh, um, in the 1997, before the 1997, there was a um, special suburbs project, uh, Progetto Speciale Periferie, so urban policies for. Uh, the urban regeneration of the Turin suburbs, in which uh, the municipality of Turin um, made uh, four main actions. And in, the, in those areas, uh, after some years, start to uh, born these uh, type of sociocultural centers. So the first one born in, 2000, in 2007, uh, in the south of the city, in Mirafiori Nord, the neighborhood of the Fiat. Uh, the name is Cascina Rocca Franca. And after, from 2009 uh, 2013, um, the other seven uh, Casa del Quartiere open. And, um, well, the, about the mission governance uh, of these, uh, these sociocultural centers. The community has a priority role in the definition of, the, of each Casa del Quartiere actions. And um, the mission of each, uh, such a, each organization that uh, manages the, the centers are, uh, is, uh, the mission is to generate the well-being for the neighborhood. And, um, so we uh, work uh, with uh, over than four and with over than uh, 390,000 inhabitants. Uh, so in the, the, this is the population of eight different uh, neighborhoods uh, of the city. Um, well, about the managing bodies, so the organization that manage these uh, Social cultural standards, we have. Uh, no, see. Yes. Sorry. And so, the, about the, the organization that manages these, um, these uh, social cultural centers, we have different, eight different governance. Uh, and so, we have one is an association, one is a community foundation. Another is an atypical participative foundation. Uh, another one is a social cooperative. Another is a cooperative of workers, two as second level association. And another one is a cooperative society. So it's really heterogeneous, uh, the, the legal forms of, the, of um, every, every organization. And uh, um, we work inside every uh, inside every um, cultural center, we work with a lot of uh, different uh, organizations, so uh, association, foundation, informal group, and citizens that organize cultural events uh, or uh, social services and uh, initiatives. And, um, and it, in the end, these, uh, the number of the, this uh, third sector organization bodies are uh, more than three, uh, 300. Um, uh, more than 300 that uh, collaborate continuously, so uh, weekly with, the, with the each social cultural standards. And um, all the data that I'm showing you are part of uh, social impact evaluation um, that uh, survey that we uh, did in the last uh, two years and uh, um, we did this uh, evaluation also through uh, questionnaire survey that we uh, that, uh, that that we give also to this uh, uh, 
um, association that uh, collaborate with us. And I want to show you a little video because uh, about the about the the burning of the the network, uh, the local network Rete delle Case del Quartiere that born uh, in uh, 2017. I hope that uh, it will uh, will uh, work with the subtitle. la vera occasione e su quello abbiamo lavorato per la prima volta secondo me in rete vera e il progetto è andato bene mi è piaciuto ha vinto e da lì per me è nata la rete abbiamo avuto l'opportunità sicuramente di, di crescere come operatori delle case Okay. Oh, we can hear you again, Julia. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sono qua. Casa del quartiere non sono il posto di quelle associazioni, di quel gruppetto di associazioni o di enti, sono il posto in cui qualcuno si mette a disposizione di altri. Sono gli spazi che accolgono le proposte, le idee, che le stimolano e in qualche modo poi aiutano associazioni, gruppi formali, singole persone nel realizzarli. Ma in realtà si racconta troppo poco il quartiere ed è il fatto che quello che sono le proposte sono plasmate sulle necessità del quartiere. Questo meccanismo crea un effetto generativo no? di, uh, molto forte, eh, permette a questi spazi di essere costruiti fino in fondo come spazi pubblici, non come casa di quell'ente, ma come casa di non si sa bene di chi. Quello che si deve respirare quando entro qui dentro è una, un idea di prossimità con l'altro. Ok, uh, so, um, so in the um, 2017 the, uh, born the, the second level association of the local network composed by the eight um, orga non-profit organizations that manage the, the Casa del Quartiere. Uh, the vision of this, uh, this association is that uh, we believe in a world where all the people uh, 
um, can cooperate in order to grow up their community, but uh, uh, not all the people, not all the citizens uh, um, have the tools to uh, grow up the community, so we are here in order to um, help people to uh, increase uh, projects and uh, social services and also cultural cultural uh, projects. And uh, the association, the network work uh, in order to spread the group good practices uh, of social innovation and urban, re urban regeneration through the neighborhood um, uh, to generate a, a better impact uh, on the city. Um, well, about the, the activity uh, that we have, I don't know if you can uh, uh, read uh, the numbers of the graphs of the graph, but uh, we uh, we have, uh, for example, more than nine uh, hundred of. Um, cultural events every year, more than 500 uh, courses and activities, 46 educational activities, 46 uh, informal groups, uh, and uh, 41 services and free desk uh, of consultancy, like uh, le uh, legal consultancy or uh, psychologist uh, support and, uh, and other things. So, uh, the activities uh, are managed by different uh, organizations. The, man the organization manager of the sociocultural centers coordinates the action and promotes services, events, and, uh, and activities. The partner organization organizes and promotes the weekly activities, uh, continuous uh, activities on a weekly basis. And uh, um, we have also occasional activities that uh, like occasional activities like big events, uh, um, yes, like big uh, events or I say. And also we have uh, commercial activities. Uh, for example, we have six different cafeteria and restaurant services. And also we host private parties that uh, is an additional income for the for the, the economy of the of the project and um, about the ownership this is uh, uh, interesting for the model because the quartier because uh, uh, in the graph the first line is the total number of activities that we have and the green part is the uh, is the number of the uh, activities organized by the manager uh, uh, of the organization manager. The orange part is the um, is, are the activities uh, um, organized by the uh, the department, the, the organization partners, and the um, blue one is uh, uh, the blue. One is the number of the uh, activities that are organized by occasional partners, so people, private people, or associations that uh, come come there to organize just one uh, event or so private events so one uh, one time for a year, for example. So this is the idea of the co-production of the social cultural offer that we have uh, totally. Uh, I'm speaking about more than 82,000 hours of activities every year, so it's uh, an ongoing engagement for the people and uh, for the for the neighborhood, for the city, and we have more than uh, four 400,000 uh, presence, uh, people that uh, comes for for events or for the uh, cultural uh, cultural events, meetings, parties, free desks, and uh, more than 18,000 uh, people was, that are survived. Uh, so, um, uh, like, uh, because they, I don't know, they. Uh, they come for, for courses or educational activity weekly. 
and the, the most part of these, uh, these people comes from the neighborhood in which is set the Casa del Quartiere. Um, about the accessibility of this activity, um, more than 50% of the activities are totally free. And, um, but, and this is because it's very important for us to engage also people that risk a social marginality. So um, we, we have a lot of people that have both a social problem or immigrants, uh, disability problems and uh, uh, youngsters that didn't study, didn't work. Um, so, uh, about the, uh, the efficiency, the economical efficiency, so how, um, well, uh, economical efficiency, uh, um, we have a different type of incomes. Uh, we have financial support from various sectors and uh, also donation from citizens. Uh, all the um, organization manager participate um, to call uh, calls for proposal uh, from uh, bank, from foundation, private foundation or public administration for a specific project. And also we have uh, uh, an annual grant from a bank foundation of the city, Compagnia di San Paolo, uh, in accord with the, with the municipality of Turin, through a protocol of Intesa. And this part, uh, this grant is the yellow, the yellow part in the graphs. So uh, we speak about the 30% of the more than 1 million new. Uh, but uh, um, about the expenditures, uh, the, the main item uh, uh, is uh, the staff cost, so it is important in order about the implement, employment redistribution. And um, but if we consider uh, all the uh, not only the incomes from the from the organization manager, but also the uh, the incomes from uh, partners organization, um, we have a very big uh, impact, economical impact, more than 3 million euro. Um, and so it's very interesting for, uh, for, uh, for uh, a little uh, play, a little reality, a little association for us. So um, we also have a lot of people involved in our uh, our sociocultural centers uh, about the volunteers, uh, which is a uh, very important human resources for the realization of the activity inside the, each casa del quartiere. So um, the, and also is uh, an indirect expression. Uh, of the participation uh, in the, the social regeneration of these, uh, these spaces. And uh, um, about uh, the, these people is involved for a lot of hours, so all the volunteers give us, donate us uh, 52,000 uh, hours every year. And uh, the, the workers, the employers uh, work for uh, more than three uh, hundred thousand uh, hours. So uh, this is a, a very big uh, mobilizing uh, effect. And um, we also have uh, people. We we also uh, we are also interested in about the uh, vulnerability. So we have uh, twenty disabled workers and a lot of uh, uh, youngsters that uh, uh, are doing uh, work, work experience uh, grants and free trainings. And uh, so finally, uh, this is about our, uh, the, the social impact of the, the Casa del Quartiere. So about uh, uh, the social impact of the the work and the, the level of employment is uh, about the mobilization of people involved in our uh, our events and also the organization of the events. 
um, also for the reduction of social marginality and um, we have a very big impact in order to relations with a certain institution. This is very interesting for the public, for the municipality and the public authority because uh, of the implementation of social and collective ser services, because we implement social and collective services at an, uh, a really advantageous cost uh, to the public authority. And um, so this is um, something about the uh, Casa del Quartiere. We have a lot of projects, a lot of commons projects, but now it's not, uh, we don't have the, the time. So we are, um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Julia, for taking the time and, and present the case of uh, the Casa del Quartiere, uh, despite a busy day in, in Turin. Uh, I just wanted to add that uh, the network of uh, Casa del Cartiere collaborates with the Urban Innovative Action in Turin, the Co-City project, uh, and we discussed this project in a previous webinar on the topic of urban commons. So just to give you a few information about Co-City, uh, Co-City uses uh, co-design with citizens to transform abandoned structures and vacant lands and uh, foster community spirit and the creation of social enterprises. Um, and if you want to listen to this webinar about urban commons, we had this example from Turin, example from Bologna, and another example from Ghent. Uh, I invite you to check the Rock YouTube channel where you can find their, uh, all the webinars we produced, including this one. Okay, and, and, and something else also, that uh, you will be able to find more information about the last two cases of the that were presented today uh, in the ROC case studies booklet we released during the summer. So the booklet is also available to download and read online on the ROC website. So you will find it by visiting the resources section on uh, www.rockproject.eu. Uh, mm -hmm. For the participants, I wanted to tell you that we will also try to collect all the presentations from the speakers so you will be able to see them again. We will put them on the ROC website. Uh, I see there are already some questions. That's great. Uh, I don't know if, Julia, you have to leave now. So, or do you, can you stay a bit more on the, on the webinar? Otherwise, we move on to the, uh, to the third presentation from Cluj this time. Um, so I will make Andras uh, our presenter. I uh, will okay. give him the floor uh, so he can explain the participatory budget for use that they have in Cluj. Um, so just to give you a few info, participatory budget are probably you know already there are policy making tools to directly involve the citizens in budgeting decision. It was first used in, in Brazil in 1989, and since then there was more than a thousand participatory budgets implemented across the five continents. Uh, and in Cluj, they took this initiative a bit differently and created a participatory budget only dedicated to young people. Uh, and this was part of Cluj year as European News Capital in 2015. Uh, they were also the first city in Romania to implement such a, such a tool. Um, but I will uh, probably let Andras uh, tell you more because he is the expert on this. So Andras, floor is yours and we can see you and okay. your screen. Uh, <laughs> you can see my screen also, okay. Yes. So, uh, okay, so uh, I will be short and brief. I don't want to take a lot of your time uh, because I realized you will not see. I made a screenshot of myself sitting in the front of the camera. So basically I'm a... Uh, part of an organization, an NGO, which is called the Pound Group. Uh, I'm project manager here for several years. And also back in 2012, actually, I was coordinating the, the candidacy of Cluj-Napoca for the European Youth Capital title, which Cluj became uh, in 2015. And I just wanted to tell you this because uh, the origins of participatory budgeting for youth uh, come from here, from this European Youth Capital program. Uh, very shortly about Pond Group, it is an NGO which is working on social innovation and we have three uh, key areas. One is the one is uh, participation, second is entrepreneurship and third is culture. And we have a special focus on uh, youth and the use of uh, digital technologies. While our work is happening in Cluj, which is our hometown and our headquarters, uh, but we also work in Transylvania at regional level, uh, of course at national level with Romania and with, uh, with Europe. Um, 
So, just a very short uh, conceptual thing. Uh, Cecilia, you defined participatory budgeting in a really uh, uh, good way. That's the definition. Uh, just a, a, a recap of this. So, it's about budgeting. So, basically, somebody has a resource which is usually financial and it wants to do something with it. So, it decides that it wants to allocate this source in a participatory manner. So, it wants to involve some people who would co decide on how to use the funding. And the participatory budgeting for youth means that in this specific case, and it was the case of Cluj, we decided when we actually found out that we have the youth capital title that we believe there are young people in the city who are not part necessarily of organizations. They are just informal groups of young people who have an idea about what they would like to do in the city, but they don't have the means to do this. So we try to convince the municipality to allocate specific funding, which in the case of European of participatory budgeting for youth, it is really small scale. I will tell you a little bit about the difference between the general PB and the youth PB. Uh, then the municipality had the funding available, so it allocated funding for this. And then the decisions regarding which initiatives proposed by young people would be funded was taken by citizens themselves. Not just young people, but citizens in general, because we said it would be something interesting to show that young people have ideas and then to create trust among citizens about the fact that young people can be serious, can contribute to city life and could, can deliver really original uh, uh, stories and, uh, and solutions. Uh, beforehand, we made a bit of small survey and actually we found out and this was this survey was targeting every young people. It wasn't just young people from organizations or uh, existing, uh, let's say, structural uh, 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 mechanisms in the city, but young people in general. And as you see, most of them said they would like to be part in any kind of interaction uh, with young people, identifying some ideas and some needs and adding to the to the to the city's life uh, uh, being involved in, in, in providing solutions to these needs uh, and a lot of them said as you will see there is a percentage which is 6.15 which said that they are not involved in anything happening in the city more of them said some do extra activities in schools others said uh, they are involved in youth organizations they said they are doing volunteering uh, another form of participation of course is taking part in various elections and um, not, the, not, the least, least, uh, not the least, we were also asking them, because there was a general participatory budgeting uh, already planned in the city, that they are doing, they are, they're more involved in past editions of any kind of participatory budgeting. So, because we believe that nobody can say to a young person, come take part in the participatory budgeting for youth. It is a complicated term. We asked designers and creatives to come up with an idea about how this process could be called. This is the name Command Cluj, which you will see on the screen. It is not written correctly in English because Command is usually written with C apostrophe uh, Man. But for us, it means a lot of things. It means that the community turns on. This is why on is, has a different color. It can be also mean common, like common, like each of ours. Uh, so it's a common good, not a private good. And of course, it can also mean the first part, uh, uh, the C O M letters can mean that it's about the community of Cluj. And it is a. It looks like a leaf, not because it is a leaf, but because it is. This is the contour of Cluj on Google Maps. It really looks like this. So of course, when designers saw how it looks, they transformed it into a green color. But actually, this is the contour of Cluj. And you see the slogan in the first year, actually in 2015, was "Do your share for a common Cluj." And on the right side, you see a lot of infographics about how we try to explain to young people. We also had animation videos. I can also share it after it with you. It's on YouTube about how participatory budget, what this means and how they can do something in this, in this process. As you will see, we are targeting young people aged 14 to 35 in proposing initiatives and they couldn't propose initiatives individually. It was a request for them to form a group which would need at least three people but they, we didn't have an upper limit about how many people can be uh, in a bigger group, so on and so forth. So in the first year, in 2015, these are some statistics, uh, we received more than 450 initiatives, which was a total surprise for everybody. Uh, these initiatives were either, we had allowed the chance for informal groups to propose several initiatives. Most of them proposed only one. Uh, as you see, like more than more than half of the groups only proposed one initiative, so they were focusing on one thing. 
and we worked a lot with them in supporting them in describing what they would like to do because in the most cases we saw that they have ideas but they really need this support in describing like why they would like to do this where they would like to do it uh, who are the who are they doing it for uh, so a basic description and the basic let's say uh, uh, project uh, uh, planning skills were needed and in this we worked with a lot of facilitators uh, so there was a huge number in the, of initiatives and then in the uh, voting stage let me I don't have the voting stage in the voting stage we had more than 18,000 people in the city who voted individuals and because they had the chance to vote for several initiatives they voted for uh, 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 they give, gave around 48,000 votes in the in the first year it was really positive and the only thing the municipality and ourselves did intervene in the process was just to check all the initiatives if they are technically implementable. So if there was an initiative proposing something which had any kind of legal framework which didn't allow it to happen for various reasons, it might be the place uh, or any kind of safety things, then we went back to that informal group and tried to work with them in order to improve or to modify a little bit the initiatives in order to be able to go to the voting stage. Uh, in the first year, we managed to support around 130 initiatives out of the 450. This is a practical example of one initiative which uh, caught mostly the eyes of the press. This is an old tram. Uh, this was repainted by a group of graffiti artists. Uh, I forgot to say that one initiative could have received only 1,000 euro around in lay because it wasn't about investments and this is one real big, big change uh, between the general participatory budgeting and the youth one. In the youth one, the voted initiatives are implemented by the young people who proposed themselves. So they were small scale initiatives and not investments in infrastructure. Uh, this one was a small scale project. Uh, basically, they bought the painting and all the stuff. This tram was painted in a general color and then with the approval of the municipality and the public transport company and because they received enough votes, this tram was repainted completely. Although it's an old train, tram, it is still uh, 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 traveling around in the city. So basically the municipality dismantled a lot of other trams like this, but this one is still going, I think because it still catches the eye of people on the streets because it's an unusual form of intervention in public space. This is the logo of uh, the 2019 edition. This is still ongoing and we will now implement the initiatives together with young people. They will implement with the support of us. And because we were discussing a lot about the culture, uh, let's say heritage conversion and, and heritage awareness in city centers, I just uh, highlighted you two things here, which were like priorities uh, in the call for activities. One was meet up, which was about thinking and proposing ideas on how various spaces in the city can be reconverted and uh, rethought in order to be able to host also youth friendly activities. While there was another uh, priority also defined by us, which, sa which said that we would like to have initiatives which connect the old and the new in the city. Uh, this old and new uh, comes also from the fact that, uh, first of all, there is a pretty strong uh, built heritage in the city center. Uh, they, they did several decades ago. And uh, while we have a lot of influx of new people in the city because it's a university city, so there are a lot of young people and students coming in the city, around 25% of actual people living in the city are students. Uh, so we had some initiatives also on this side and uh, now the implementation of these small-scale initiatives will happen in practice. This year you saw that the slogan was get up for a common Cluj, which said basically don't just stay home, come forward, have your idea, propose it, uh, get support for it and then uh, the municipality will support you in implementing these initiatives. Okay, and um, just one addition, which might also relate to uh, what Rock does. This is the uh, basically the yeah the screenshot from the main website of the general participatory budgeting process, which is done directly by the municipalities now in the voting stage. And uh, just to remark to this, uh, general PB ha is happening now for three years in the city, and in 2018 there was an initiative which was proposed in order to create a youth center in the city. Unlike Torino, and yes, we know the example of Torino because we worked with the municipality of Torino in a, 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 a Command Europe, which is a European level uh, project, which I will refer to in my closing stage. 
But basically, young people proposed in the general PB to have a youth center. They mobilized themselves, they voted, and then this building, which is in the main square of the city, and yes, where the, there is also a KFC, uh, part of this building uh, on the ground floor will be transformed into this youth center. Investment is supported, of course, by the municipality, and now they are the ongoing process of creating how the youth city, how the youth center would work in a participatory and in a co-management way. Because the municipality and the main youth federation from Cruz signed an agreement half a year ago that they would co-manage this youth center. And as you see it on the building, it will be in a heritage building. So it's a kind of reconversion and uh, uh, reuse of a, of a public of a, of a space owned by the municipality, which is also part of the built culture heritage in the city. So just a final thing, uh, thanks to Comment Cluj also, we did a, a European project that was supported by Erasmus Plus. It uh, involved uh, seven cities, including Torino, uh, also Thessaloniki, Braga from Portugal, Varna from Bulgaria, um, Kashkais from Portugal, and uh, I'm missing somebody, Maribor from Slovenia. And basically, we said that we created a framework which we says that which in which we say that participatory budgeting for youth is really useful in how the city as a support ecosystem can enable young people to do something for their city. We really believe in the fact that basically these kind of processes lead to, to awareness about the city's challenges. Then the awareness can also lead to trust because people start to trust each other in working together in, 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 uh, in supporting each other in delivering even small scale projects. While in the end we believe that uh, this all of this can lead to ownership, like every citizen having the feeling that he or she owns the city, it's, it's part of the city, and if there is this feeling of ownership, then of course a lot of things become co-created in the city, which of course raises the quality of life on long term. Basically what we created, and this is also available on our website, is we created a white paper which basically explains what participatory budgeting in general and for youth is, what are the main steps, uh, what are the options which a city can decide on how to deliver a participatory budgeting for youth, some are doing in schools, others are limiting the age, others go through organizations. So there, may, there might be a lot of uh, characteristics which can be adapted. And we also developed a toolkit which basically tries to support the ones who are governing a program like this at city level, either the municipality or a partnership of organizations, but which also support young people and how to frame an idea, how to work on it, how to become ready maybe to transform from an informal group into a formal group, and how to use all of this in, in, in the benefit of the city. Uh, this is what I wanted to pre prepare really shortly. Uh, for us, it was a very hard challenge. Out, from outside, it looks really easy to, to, do it, to do it. Most of the work, of course, is happening in the background, in, in understanding and working together with the municipality on how to deliver something like this, how to support the initiatives of young people, especially if they are not legally established organizations, but they are young people. So it was really interesting for us. Uh, we are going forward. It is still happening in Cluj. It is happening in two other Romanian cities. And also with the other European city partners, we will work together to, to promote this and to consolidate uh, all the process. Because, of course, it is not just the, about the idea to create this, but maintaining it and improving it constantly. I think it's a, it's a very good challenge. But we really like to work on this. And I really think it, this is something which is... Uh, a very positive thing for, for, for any city which uh, uh, decides to, to, to deliver something like this. Thank you. Thank you, Andras. was very clear and uh, very interesting. Um, thank you to all the speakers for the great presentations. We are running a bit over time. I'm really sorry about this, but I hope participants can stay online a few more minutes because there have been some questions asked in the question panel. And I would like to ask them uh, before we close the, the webinar. Julia had to leave, but she answered already uh, in writing to some of the questions you asked. Uh, so I would just now share my own screen. that You can see um, the, the latest information. So the first question is uh, to Lisbon, uh, and it's from Judy Ling, who has left as well because she had the other business to run uh, but it was about uh, natural heritage is natural he heritage included in the research you do in Mavila because in the present awareness of the positive impact of nature on people's quality of life in the neighborhoods 
and also possible actions for air pollution or climate change. There is an awareness of natural heritage that can also be a driving force for green regeneration. So, uh, Roberto and Alexandra, um, can you answer this question about natural heritage? Is it included in the research you do in Marvilla? Hey, Cecile? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Can you Did repeat? you hear the uh, question? We... The question yeah, was had... about, uh, is natural heritage included in the research that you do in Marvilla? Natural heritage. Yeah, not only cultural heritage, tangible and intangible, but also the natural heritage, the preservation of it for people's quality of life in the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would say maybe in two, in two dimensions. The first one is that um, uh, the natural uh, dimension is included in the, uh, in the analysis that the municipality is doing for the implementation of the initiatives and, and, sorry, and the university is doing in terms of research because of the big uh, um, presence and uh, quantity of uh, urban voids in the, in the area, in Marvilla and Beato. And the urban voids in some cases are uh, abandoned green areas, uh, which actually require uh, this kind of analysis, uh, uh, specific analysis. Um, in terms of preservation of uh, the natural aspects, uh, I would say no, even though one of the initiatives of the Rock uh, uh, in Lisbon was the uh, construction of um, a container for the creation of an, ed an edible garden, um, which was also supposed to promote the preservation of some uh, uh, natural species uh, in the area. Uh, even though, I mean, the, the main goal of the container was to create this uh, new space for um, uh, collective uh, living the neighborhood and uh, uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy also the products of uh, the garden. I don't know if Alexandra wants to add something. No, I think uh, you, have, um, um, you have made a, a synthesis of uh, um, this question. Yeah, in yeah. terms of yeah. natural, I would say maybe these two levels of, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not the main core no. of the action. And, it's not uh, the main way. core, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Julia is gone already because, but it's, it's a pity because uh, Judy had the same question for Turin, but there is another interesting question that is for all of you. Um, and it's about the reaction of the local community. Uh, how mm -hmm. did the local community react when being asked to participate in the projects you set up? Uh, did they have any resistance or did uh, the cities or the NGOs had some audience development and engagement projects before? And this is from Daniela, um, who is still here, so she can hear you as well. So maybe a first uh, Lisbon and then Andras, maybe you can say a few words as well. I don't know if young people were reluctant to participate. Um, okay, so um, yeah, it, according to the design of the project, um, we were uh, compelled to create uh, a living lab in the in the area of intervention, and the living lab was supposed to include uh, both uh, associated and non-associated citizens. Um, and as I was saying, uh, what we were saying in the presentation, the library of mm -hmm. Marvilla actually worked as a headquarter of mm -hmm. uh, the activities, including the living lab. So we took advantage of something that was already um, going on and already existed in terms of uh, self-organization of the local communities. Uh, one of the most important ones is called the community group, uh, which is, uh, I would say, an informal, formal institution uh, that is uh, present in also in other neighborhoods in Lisbon, which basically gathers uh, different actors, uh, both associated and non-associated. So the Living Lab in Lisbon uh, um, uh, was originated uh, and uh, took uh, uh, great inspiration by this uh, uh, 
uh, the community group which already existed in the in the area and i would say that at the same time they fed each other mutually uh, because uh, um, the rock was also one of the issues debate for the community group uh, which uh, um, gradually uh, took the ownership of uh, some of the initiatives uh, of the of the rock uh, and uh, also an understanding a better understanding of how the project uh, worked and at the same time the rock also um, um, took advantage of uh, this dynamic uh, uh, which was already in place uh, before the implementation of, of uh, the project and also through through the project the reaction of the uh, the community um, uh, um, i mean it's uh, was ambivalent uh, to be very mm -hmm. uh, brief uh, on the one hand uh, there mm, there was and there is still uh, participation of uh, some uh, citizens uh, a part of the local community um, take into account that uh, as a, as we were saying in the presentation we are we have been focusing uh, mainly around the library in the area around the library so uh, the uh, people living around the library know uh, the project uh, know the rock and they've been engaged more in the initiative so from their side there has been a, a, a positive reaction uh, but at the same time uh, there has been uh, in the last two three years there has been a grow a growth of uh, initiatives in the area mm -hmm. uh, both uh, uh, funded by uh, international uh, funding like in the case of the rock uh, and other projects uh, funded by the h 2020 are ongoing now uh, in the same area but also local local activities for example the the program of urban regeneration that i mentioned before the uh, which is working in uh, critical neighborhoods in lisbon is also working in marvilla so there is this uh, kind of uh, of working of actors uh, funding uh, and uh, institutions which uh, is likely to uh, overwhelm uh, the local communities and we are uh, sensing in the last mm -hmm. few months that uh, people are also getting um, um, confused uh, uh, about who is doing what, uh, which are the goals of uh, the activities. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would maybe I would say that mm -hmm. it's kind of ambivalent. We and we as a university, for example, are. Uh, problematizing the approach that we are uh, implementing in the territory, taking into account also this aspect, mm -hmm. which is fundamental to us. I mean, uh, what kind of uh, uh, action research we are doing in the in the field, and uh, how can we prevent uh, people from uh, dropping out from uh, these initiatives mm -hmm. uh, uh, without. Uh, uh, yeah, without overwhelming these people with a lot of uh, requests and uh, interviews and the surveys and so on and so forth. And mm -hmm, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's uh, the, the big issue is is this one because this area is is uh, full of investigators and um, uh, initiatives and projects and um, even um, though there is the, the community group. And uh, those initiatives and, and are presented there and are a, a little bit decodified for the people uh, to, to understand them. Um, people don't don't um, don't view the, the the results immediately. So in um, several cases, they they don't believe that uh, something is going to happen there. And um, they they ask for concrete con concrete no, for um, yes for um, concrete actions and not with uh, projects and then investigations and things that they don't understand and that they they don't 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 see the results. Yes, indeed. I think the follow up of these participation actions is very important. That people need yes. to see. Uh, the implemented projects in the end. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if Andras, you had similar uh, examples or issues with uh, young people, which is a different uh, target group. If you also give back, give me back the share uh, the screen for just a second. Ah, okay. Hop, done. Uh, 
it was I, I just uh, tried to find a, uh, uh, one screen where uh, you one can see what kind of things we try to use uh, just three three comments basic ones I think that young people if they are asked and in, in the right question is put to them they will answer to it uh, every time it might be an answer or for a passive question what what are your needs your problems or uh, an active question or what like you would you like to do the other thing i would like to, uh, to underline is that we cannot expect for young people to come to us we have to go to them and we have to go to them in a language or speaking a language which is not complicated not uh, too theoretical, not to using too, I don't know, uh, complex words, but to go really simple. As you see, we used a lot of colors and designs. We used these ideas, boxes, and, and so on and so forth. So we try to reach them through their own mechanisms. And of course, because I'm also already 48 of, years of age, it wasn't me going to them. We created a group of facilitators, a little bit similar, like I also know that in Torino, they are working a lot with, with, with community engagers. And we, you need to do this, and then you need to go to their place. And uh, finally, I think what is really important, and this can be one of the key aspects of any participatory process, is that you have to really work on it very thoroughly. And uh, as it was also uh, mentioned before, you need to deliver on the results. In our case, it was the young people themselves delivering the results, but then we had to promote these results because a small scale initiative might not be visible in the city but it is up to us and the municipality to promote it in order for people to see for what they voted for. And if all of these are created, then they, there is a trust towards the mechanism and built, built under trust, trust, you can do it again, you can improve and they will come back. And our impression was really positive and constantly we had this idea that we have to avoid telling young people what they should do our only role is just to create a setting, a framework, which might, can be a, a, a youth center in the neighborhood. It can be a process like this. It can be, in some cases, financial support, but not that necessarily, which really helps them develop themselves and trying out themselves and supporting them when they are delivering something. And I believe this is the best learning process, not just for the city, but also for the young people themselves who get involved. That's all. Yes, very, very interesting what you're saying. So what I would like just to draw as sort of conclusion, what you said from from the answers to the question is that it's what, what your project basically just created the setting to allow this participation to happen, be it with young people or with uh, residents of the neighborhoods of, of Mavila, uh, so that the setting helps them uh, create and develop their own their own project. But what is important is that in the end, the municipality or the organizers of this framework has to deliver. So the trust is there. And once it's there, people will come back and continue the participation. Uh, and something you said as well that is interesting is that it's very important to have uh, linking parties that are the, you call them community engagers. So I think this is a interesting point as well. So just now we are really over time i'm really sorry but it was very interesting discussion so it's a pity to to end it now but uh, i would i won't take uh, no more questions uh, today thank you all very much for having attending this uh, rock webinar as i said it was hosted by euro citizen and, and julie's bicycles in the context of the of the rock project we have uh, next webinars planned uh, and the next one will be in november try to share my screen again so you can see the dates and the topic Hop. the next rock webinar is planned so I said on 14 November and this time we will focus on culture as a rocket fuel for urban regeneration looking at uh, uh, different cases and trying to have a critical look at this you can already register the link is open and you can find all the information on the rock website if you want to receive the news from the Rock Project and be informed as well about the next webinars, for instance, you can subscribe to the Rock newsletter by visiting our website, rockproject.eu. And I wanted to thank you again and wish you a nice rest of the day. And as I said, we will uh, share the link to of the recording of the webinar and share the presentation so you can also contact the presenters again if you have more questions. Thank you very much uh, and see you soon. Bye-bye.